So now that we know how loops work uh, to get the robot to do information again and again, we're going to combine that with the amazing processing speed that modern computers have. And the way that we're going to combine those two is through the use of sensors. So sensors are pretty much what they sound like. They are ways for a robot to sense its environment, to determine what is around it. The first sensor that we're going to take a look at is the EV3 color sensor. So the name of it gives away part of what it does, which is sensing color. But a more useful way to think about this uh, when we're first thinking about it is that it's going to sense the amount of light that is underneath the robot. So right now, the robot is on a black surface here, and the edges of the board are a white surface. So I'm going to show you how to take a look at the sensor data that the robot's getting, uh, and so you can use this to make decisions and to teach the robot to make decisions for itself. So I'm going to stop the simulator, and then I'm going to hit play again. Now, I'm going to navigate uh, using the right-click and left-click buttons here, uh, and up and down and center, right? and I'm going to change the mode of this robot into port view. So I'm going to move to the right once and again. And now the first thing on this menu is called port view. So I'm going to select that with the dark gray button here. So port view tells me that sensor number one is a color reflex sensor. It sees 17%. Now we're actually going to take a look at sensor number three, which is this left color sensor here. So I'm going to move over to it and it is also seeing 17% light reflect and what does that mean so this sensor emits a light that hits whatever is underneath it and then the light bounces back now if it's a dark object only a low percentage of that light reflects back for instance in this case it's 17% but if I move the robot over to the white area you'll see that the percentage of light that's being reflected back goes up so when the robot is over on the white edge, we're going to see a much higher number. So for instance, 67. Here you can see the red light that it's beaming down, and 67% of that light is coming back. So when it's on a dark color, about 16%. When it's on light, 67%. We can use those values to help us make decisions, and I'll show you how to do that. In the programming environment, the first thing that we're going to need to do is grab a loop. Uh, just like we did before. And the reason that we're using a loop is that we have to have the robot make a lot of decisions very, very quickly. So if we go back to the software, what we're going to have the robot do is we want to drive around on this board, but we don't want the robot to fall off. And we know that the edge of the board is, is covered in white. So we can say to the robot, all right, if you are on a dark color, drive forward a little bit. If you're on a dark color still, drive forward a little bit and do that forever. But if you are ever on a light color, instead of doing that, why don't we back up, turn, and then make the same set of decisions again? So it needs to make a whole lot of little decisions here. I'm on dark, 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 I'm on dark. Oh, I'm on light. I need to do something different. So this robot will actually make these decisions in milliseconds, uh, amounts of time that are so small that we can't really even comprehend them as humans. So let's see how to make the robot do that in the software. And the magic is a switch. So in the same orange section down here, there is a switch section, which looks like this. I'm gonna drag it up inside of the loop and the first thing that I need to do is tell it what kind of sensor we are using our switch with. We are going to use a color sensor, which is the second one here. And we are going to use compare reflected light intensity. So choose those. And we're going to use port number three. So when we have a switch, what this does is it lets us make one of two decisions. What to do in two different cases. The top case is what to do if this statement is true, and the bottom case is what the robot will do if this case is false. So what is this case? If the switch sees less than 50% light, it will do what is true. If it sees 
something else, it will do what is false. So what does less than 50% light look like? That means that it is on the dark section. So at 19%, that is less than 50% light. So what do we want the robot to do in this case? Drive forward. So that's what we're gonna tell the robot to do. We're gonna tell the robot to drive forward. We're gonna do that in the same way that we did before with the drive steering block. So we're gonna put that block here in the yes section. So what exactly do we want the robot to do? We want it to move, but we don't want it to move a rotation because it might go off the board if we select it to rotation. So we could go a smaller amount like 0.5 or 0.1, but there's actually a secret here. We can have it just turn the motor on forever by clicking here and selecting on instead of on for rotations. So clicking the on button will give us a mode where we can turn this motor on forever at 50% power. So this will drive the robot forward forever at 50% speed. Now, what if the robot sees something else? If it sees something that is not less than 50? Well, we know from the case here that that is gonna be the edge of the board. So if we are at the edge of the board, what might want we want the robot to do? Well, in this case, we would want it to back up and turn to the left so that it's away from the edge. So we have to program it to do that. I'm going to have the robot back up by giving it a negative amount of power. So let's say negative 56 for one rotation. And then I'm gonna have it turn to the left. I'm gonna have it turn hard to the left for half a rotation. So this robot, if it's on dark, it will go forward. If it's on light, it will back up and it will turn left a half a rotation. It will do this, it will check this switch block over and over and over in milliseconds constantly. It'll do it thousands and thousands of times. And that is how our robot will determine what it is that it needs to do. So I'm gonna reset the simulator by hitting stop. And now I am going to run that piece of software. Here we go. So there's the robot going forward. And when it hits the edge, it stops and turns. And when it hits the edge again, it will stop and turn. And it will continue to do this forever. Now if I leave this robot like this for long enough, it may very well hit that tower, knock it down and knock some pieces over for me. So a good way to program this robot might be to start the robot off at the beginning, have it push over the tower, and then go into that mode where it repeats the same process over and over again. How would I do that? Well, if I know I want it to do a slow left turn, I put it before this. So I'm gonna create a left turn, let's say about three rotations at 50% power. Let's roll that and see. Well, I turned too sharply. So instead of 24, I'm gonna make that a 12, a negative 12 rather. And I'm gonna run that again. Let's try that again. So there we go. We've pushed the block down and now that it is finished with that first drive, it is driving around using our algorithm that we wrote to have it avoid falling off the edge and it's pushing some blocks off. So as you can see, this is the beginning of a solution to our to our challenge.